Yo, Stackmo Chris here, man. We're going to be going over a guide and we're going to be going over what candlestick wicks are. So I know you guys might see on your charts here, um, you guys might always see these little long lines here that are going to be black or whatever color you guys do have your set as. But pretty much I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what these candlestick wicks mean and what they are and how you guys can identify them to go ahead and read price action. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So pretty much a candlestick wick is also known as a shadow or tail. Um, it pretty much refers to kind of like the thin lines here that you're going to see here that extend from the body of a candlestick price on a chart. Um, these wicks represent the highest and lowest prices reached during a specific time period. So as you guys can see here per candlestick here, depending on the time frame you're on, whether the one hour, each of these candlesticks are going to be one hour candlesticks. Um, so each of these candlesticks represent one hour in real time. Um, depending if you're on the four hour, each of these candlesticks represent four hours of real time. Daily, each of these candlesticks represent a day candlestick. Um, weekly, each candlestick represents a week, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you guys will pretty much be able to see the price action that pretty much went on within a specific time. So during the eight o'clock hour on Friday the 6th, um, we saw the candlestick here look like this. So as you guys can see here, we're going to have the upper wick, which is going to be up here. So we, we're going to have the upper wick, which is going to be up here. Boom. You guys are going to be able to see that here. And then we're also going to have what's called the lower wick. So we have the upper wick. And let me go ahead and type this over here. And then we're going to have the lower wick, right? Boom. So when you guys are going to be able to see both of those wicks, first your upper and your lower wick down here, you guys are going to be able to identify, okay, so I'm going to be able to see what happened where price reacts off of off of these wicks. So you're going to notice one thing with the supply and demand setups is that price is going to react off of old wicks, right? So let me go ahead and pull up an example for you guys here. So let me go ahead and just go to the indexes chart here. Uh, let me just pull up something. Let me just pull up NAS 100, for example, right? Also known as the NQ. So if you guys are being able to see here on the daily charts here, um, using the indicators swing points liquidity by Leviathan and pivots high and low, you guys are going to be able to see the volume on the top of the wicks at key areas, right, where price is reacting. So as you guys can see here, pretty much by this eyeball, we have this uh, key resistance zone here, um, just because we do have price stop stopping out here, creating some support. And then we have two areas of resistance with high volume, right? So as you guys can see here, on these upper wicks, boom, 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 boom. That's where price decided to sell off and the price decided to close. So you guys are going to be able to go ahead and see here. So wicks pretty much mean people taking profit. So wicks mean that that's the amount of people that exited. You're going to be able to see here. So for this example here, so price decided to continuously dump down a super duper aggressively here. And then as you guys can see here, by reading this wick candle right here, we saw that price decided to bounce up for a little bit and the price decided to close pretty much, if that makes sense, um, all the price action and then people sold and the price decided to continue to tell to stay down. So as you guys can see here where the bars get big and chunky like this, you guys are going to be able to see these are where the candles are actually holding volume and people aren't letting go of their positions. So people in buys within these candlesticks over here are actually staying in. And as you guys can see, the wicks are not big because people are not selling their long contracts here. But as you guys can see here, when price decided to come down here and then reverse quickly, people decided to exit out of longs because they knew that it wasn't a key area of support like down here to go ahead and buy. So people decided to go ahead and close their trades. And that's why you guys end up seeing the wick and the shadow here. And you guys are going to be able to go ahead and identify this price action uh, within any type of uh, setup that you guys do identify. So if we're going to go ahead and we're going to get on the daily. So let me go ahead and identify a setup for you guys quickly here, right? So I like to go ahead and uh, just use my daily two day or weekly time frame here. So I'm going to go ahead and just identify some support and resistance here that makes sense to me. Boom. So we have this candlestick section that makes sense over here. Why? Because we have this lower wick creating support off of this. And then we also do have this resistance candle over here, which creates some structure as well over here too. So if you guys can see that too, boom, we have this candlestick structure wick, 
Let me go ahead and draw some circles around it too. So one, and then we're going to have two. So we have two key candlesticks areas over here. Uh, so we're going to be able to scale down to my smaller time frame and see what the price action looks like over here. So boom, we have a very key wick with 125,000 orders over here. So boom, price decided to come down here. Price decided to wick off of this lower wick down here. Boom, price decided to wick off of this area right here, also known as the lower wick, right? So because of that, then we're able to go ahead and identify other key price action over here. Within the past as well, we have some price action uh, bouncing over here. Some morning candles as well. 10 o'clock candle, uh, 10 o'clock candles are going to be very strong as well. Um, if you're on the four hour and stuff like that, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock candles to see where price action is at. Um, and see what it does because that's when market opens and that's when there's a very high amount of volume. So as you can see here, price dipped down into this uh, area near where we have our zone here and the price decided to buy. Letting us know that this area down here is uh, definitely probable, especially since we had this very key lower wick down here. So price decided to come down here. People decided to um, sell their sell contract. So as you guys can see here, price was dumping down. So it was a red candle. So this is a bearish candle. And then people decided to go ahead and sell and it turned into buys and it instantly um, just wicked up. And then price decided to close green and continue to hold volume once price confirmed that it was in an uptrend, right? So pretty much guys, you want to be able to just use wicks to go ahead and identify your uh, areas, especially on reversals as well. Um, you're going to get some really quick wicks, especially when people are waiting for price to be forced into a specific area. So that's how you guys are going to be able to identify wicks. You guys can also get with me for mentorship as well at stackmode.net. And I also do have signals too. Um, I give you guys a one day free trial as well within my signals. And you guys can also get my course and ebook as well, which also explains uh, candlestick definitions as well. I'm going to be working on a candlestick guide for you guys as well, which I'm going to be dropping here soon. I just wanted to go ahead and pump out this guide for you guys. Um, so yeah, so pretty much um, a long upper wick is going to suggest. So a uh, long upper wick equals selling pressure and that buyers try to push the price higher but sellers sold it back down, okay? So that's that's what a lower wick means. So selling pressure, buyers tried to push the price higher, but price decided to sell back down, right? So as you guys can see here, right here, this was successful in bringing the price higher, right? But then we're gonna go ahead and identify some resistance Boom. So as you guys can see here, boom, 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 boom. We have some areas of wicking over here. We have a uh, lower wick here. So as you guys can see here, we have some pressure. Boom, boom, boom. Buyers tried to push the price higher and then sellers decided to go ahead and sell it back down. So that's how you guys can identify the wicks that you guys do see here. Same thing for, um, there's gonna be a long lower wick as well. There's gonna be a long upper wick, my apologies. So this is gonna be for the long upper wick. Um, so it's going to be up here for when price uh, decides to fall back down and then you're going to have a long lower wick, right? So long lower wick, which is when the buying pressure, but then there we go. In the case of buying pressure that sellers tried to push the price lower, but then buyers pushed it back up like in this example right here. So as you guys can see here, we have a lower wick here. Sellers tried to continue to push it back down, but then price decided to wick up and then price decided to go ahead and continue upward once again. All right, so that's gonna be the full wick guide. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Stack Mo Chris here, bam.